Good morning. This is All India Radio Kohima. The morning news read by Jonu Siantan. President Draupadi Murmu said that there is immense potential for development in the northeastern region. The development of the region is getting a new impetus with various new projects of highways, railways, airways and waterways. Inaugurating Trepara State Judicial Academy and laying the foundation stone for Trepara National Law University in Narsinkar in Akatale yesterday, the President said the northeastern region, including Trepara, will play an important role in making India a $5 trillion economy by 2025. Expressing her happiness to lay the foundation stone of the National Law University, she said that over the past three decades, National law universities have played a significant role in the field of law education. Today, with the growth of the economy, the legal profession has also expanded in many dimensions. She expressed hope that NLU Trepara will emerge as a major centre of legal education, not only in the northeast but across the country. The Union Cabinet has approved payment of a productivity-linked bonus equivalent to 78 days the railway employees for the financial year 2021-22. Briefing reporters after the Cabinet meeting in New Delhi yesterday, Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Singh Tagoro said the bonus amount will be paid to about 11,27,000 non-gazetted railway employees. The Cabinet also approved 22,000 crore rupees as one-time grant to public sector undertakings, oil marketing companies for losses in domestic LPG. Thakuru said this will help them to continue their commitment to the Atmanirpa Parad Apian, ensuring unhindered domestic LPG supplies. He underlined that the prices of LPG have risen globally up to 300%. Thakur said the compensation will be given to the three companies, Indian Oil Corporation, Parad Petroleum Corporation and Hindustan Petroleum Corporation. Nagaland government will be launching the Chief Minister's Health Insurance Scheme, CMHIS, on Friday. The CMHIS aims to provide free and cashless benefits to every bona fide citizen of the state for treatment of various ailments. As the state embarks on the journey towards universal health coverage, Department of Health and Family Welfare has invited all AHODs, HODs and government officials, representatives of Nagaland Pensioners Association, CANSIA, NCSA, NSSA and other associations, civil societies, church and faith based organizations and community leaders, as well as ex-parliamentarians and ex-legislators to join the launching program on October 14 at 11 a.m. at the State Banquet Hall, Chief Minister's Residential Complex, Kohima. Speaker of Nagaland Legislative Assembly, NLA, Sharingan Longoma, called on Union Minister for Parliamentary Affairs, Coal and Mining, Pralat Joshi, in New Delhi yesterday. A press release from OST to Speaker, Sung Jim Gala stated that Longamar expressed his gratitude to the Union Minister for the support extended in the implementation of the National e Vitan Application Project in the NLA. Union Minister Joshi also acknowledged the hard work and commitment shown by NLA Secretariat for the implementation of the project and congratulated the Speaker for being the first in the country to operationalize the e Vitan project in the Assembly Secretariat. Joint Secretary of the Ministry of Donor, Anuratha S. Jakati, yesterday visited Shangsa village in Mon district and held an interactive meeting with the village council and various stakeholders at the council hall Sangsha village. The purpose of her visit was to make the people aware of the Sampav Mission Mode program which focuses on the development of backward blocks and villages across the northeast by converging and monitoring key indicators such as access to health, education, drinking water, electricity and financial inclusion. During the interaction, she inquired as to how the village was utilising and implementing the various central and state government schemes at the grassroots level. Chagadi also directed the village functionaries to highlight the development requirements of the village and the shortcomings of various schemes. After the interaction, she visited a village school and Nganwadi Centre. That is all we have in this morning news bulletin. Have a good day.